What's up guys? We're back with another banger of a video. Today we've got something truly unique and mesmerizing for you. A DIY integrity table. Trust me, this is gonna blow your mind. Before we dive into how to make this beauty, let me show you what we're going to create today. The integrity table. It's not just a piece of furniture, it's a work of art that defies gravity. Now, you might be wondering what on earth is its integrity table. Well, it's a magical balance between tension and compression. The name itself comes from tensional integrity, and the secret lies in its floating appearance. Alright, let's jump into the fun part, building our own integrity table. Follow these steps carefully and you'll have your own jaw-dropping piece of art in no time. Now for the dimensions of the table, I want it to be 30cm on 30cm. Why? Because I want to be able to put my helmet on it. So this is a fishing wire I'm going to be using. It's half a millimeter thick. It's rated for almost 19 kilos, which is 41 and a half pounds. To secure the fishing wire, I'm going to be using some metal brackets. But I'm going to take off the top part so that it takes up less space. And now I just have to bend it a little bit and it's going to break off. I need to make these holes a tiny bit bigger so I can fit the screw through it. This is how it's starting to look like, so a little piece of wood to support the top layer where the blacked out part is. I'm going to cut out some wood so I can put the plexiglass in it. I'm going to do it using my router. So I'm going to cut the plexiglass. I have some old plexiglass laying around, but I'm going to sand it first so we can get this matte effect. Now I'll cut the legs of the table at 20 degree angles. Now I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to take my router and I'm going to make a slit right in the center of this piece of wood on both sides. And then I'm going to cover it with some plexiglass so that the light can shine through it. Now I'll go through this slit with a slightly bigger bit so that I can place the plexiglass inside of it and that should be approximately 4 to 5 millimeters deep. This is how the pieces of wood turn out. Now I'll just need to cut the plexiglass so I can put it inside of here. Next up are these pieces. I'm going to make a slit inside of it and also put some plexiglass on top of that. I'll just go through this piece of wood, again with the router but with a bigger bit and then it's going to look something like this. Wow, look at this, beautiful. Some woodworker is probably watching this and thinking that's not how you do it son, but hey, it works for me. Next up I have to cut the plexiglass so it fits inside of this hole. Now I just have to make a square fit inside a circle. Look at this, it's going so great. Et maintenant, le moment suprême. Sometimes in life, things go perfectly. This is one of those times. This is wunderbar. Now, what's next? Actually, I don't know. That's a difficult part of doing a DIY project like this. You never know what's next. The next thing I do might fuck up this whole project. I don't know, let's find out. But you were lucky, because watching this video, you have a step-by-step -step plan on how to do this. Okay, let's screw these brackets in. This is probably one of the hardest parts and it's to determine where you're going to place the legs of the table. I'm going to make a hole inside of this so the lead strip can pass through it. Now I'm going to make a hole inside of this part. And now I'm going to make a second hole here. So this is how it's starting to look like. Here the LED strip will be put through. Here it will come out. This is the other side of the table. Those are little anchors that I made so the fish wire can be hung around it. And we're gonna put some tension on it. I've just attached these little pieces with some screws. I think I just figured out how I could have known where I had to place the legs of the table. And that's with some string with a little bolt attached to it. Where the center of the table is, it should align with this bolt. For example, I cut this piece at a 20 degree angle. And if I move it all the way back here, then and only then, this little thing aligns perfectly with the center of the table, which is here. If I were to cut this piece at a 10 degree angle, which would have been more like this, then I would have had to move it forward and then the center of the table will align with this little bolt 
then I would have known that I should have placed it here. Okay, I've managed to screw this piece in. I've added some screws so it would be more sturdy. Okay, now the other one. Okay, now the holes at each corner of the table. So four here and then also at the other side. Okay, what's next? I don't know. Should I glue it together? Should I try to put the fishing wire in? Should I put the LED light in? Paint it first? I don't know. Let's find out. Little update. I will be sanding down little imperfections. Let's go. We got rid of the excess wood here. I will now glue these pieces of wood on the plank, place them on here, and now I can glue the LED strip on these sides. Both sides are done. Whilst we are waiting for the glue to dry, we can start painting the underside of the table. Whilst everything is still drying, we're going to open up the LED strip. Whoa, look at this. There is no controller as you can see, so I'm assuming they only work with an app. Let's go to the app store and install the app. So I've went around it, now I'm gonna put it through the hole that we made earlier, so it can go down this leg. Now it can go through this part, through here, and then it will come out here. I've just thought of something, I have enough meters of LED strip to go around it twice, so I'll do that, otherwise I'll lose a part of the LED strip and that's wasteful. Like this. Alright, now I will cut the strip, but first we will unplug it of course. Now let's test it again. Okay, it works. I will add a little bit of wood glue in between these parts to make it even sturdier. Just a little preview of it. I did the same thing with the other LED strip. This is the only piece I'm not using and it's not a lot, so I'm happy with that. Now I'll have to put some copper wire in between this part and then of course the other part and that's going to be hung like this. So I have to solder that on. I thought of using really thin copper wires uh, so that you would almost not see it, but it doesn't really feel safe considering there's going to be 1.5 amps, 18 watts and 12 volts going through it. According to ChatGPT, I should have at least one millimeter thick wires, which this is, so it's going to be safer. Unfortunately, you're going to see the wire. I have three identical copper wires that I'm going to be hanging between the two LED strips. I wish I could do it a different way. If you have a suggestion, leave it in the comments below to let us know how you would have tackled this problem. How you can make invisible copper wires or something that would connect the two LED strips without showing them. Damn! They're connected. For extra safety I will be adding a little bit of shrinking tube at the top so that the copper wire is completely covered. I will also be gluing a little wooden block here in the corner so I take some pressure off this joint. Now we can put the top pack on, make the LED light go through it. To suspend the fishing wire between the two posts, I'm going to use a little bolt like this. I filed it down in the middle so the grooves of the bolt are gone. I put shrinking tube on top of it, tying a knot. The fishing wire is pretty complicated because if you try to do it, it's so slippery that it just comes undone. So I'm going to have to use special knot. Let me try to explain it. So you have a loop that you make at one end of the fishing wire and then you take the other end of the fishing wire and you go through the loop and then you have to spin it around it a couple of times let's try to make it five or six times and then you take it back again i try to make it go through the loop that you made it go through the first time and then you take the ends and you pull on it. <laughs> and you pull and you pull and you pull. And you can see that now the knot does stay where it's supposed to stay. Okay, and now you have a knot. I can trim off the excess wire like so. And now we have our loop that you can then turn around a couple of times like so. And then one more time. We have our little loops that we made with the fishing wire and then we're going to push it through here and then to keep it in place we're gonna put this in between it so it stays like this. And now I can do the same thing on the other side. 
before I assemble the two pieces, I'm going to hang the fishing wire. They will go under the LED strip and then at the end the loop will go around this little anchor and then I'll make it go through the hole. I had the ingenious idea to hang the little table on this workbench, uh, so using a clamp. Now I can hang the little fishing wire in between those two parts and my girlfriend is going to be pissed because I stopped the washing machine to film this part. Sorry babe. I've managed to wedge it in there, so now it's connected. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to make sure it doesn't move. Now we can start attaching the corners together. I just took it off the workbench and it's floating as you can see, but it has no stability because the corners aren't attached yet. So basically I tried to attach the fishing wire directly to the bolts, but that did not work. So I had to come up with something better. Alright guys, I spent so much time trying to figure out a way to put some tension on the line so that I could adjust it uh, if needed. So I've got this little 6mm bolt right here through the hole. On the other side I'm gonna place the nut, but I'm going to glue it down so it stays in place. When I turn this, it will move forward and it will push the fishing wire away so that we create tension. This part, this is a little wooden block that I made, so this has a 7mm hole for the 6mm bolt. It's gonna be placed inside of it and also I took away some of the wood so that the bolts would not be in the way. And then once we turn, it's gonna push the whole thing forward for the fishing wires we're gonna put it around the wooden block like this of course and this is just one of those electrical clamps so the fishing wire has been put through this and then you clamp it down and then at the end I just made a little knot an extra knot that will not come undone you know it's really sturdy I can trust this so I've put the bolts in glued the nuts to this piece of metal and then the little pushing blocks slides perfectly in. Now if I will turn this, I'll push the block away. <laughs> yeah, boy. Hey, I got something. Two second hacks Follow my moves. I'm just so fear and everyone can play. I know it's tough and I know this pain. Okay. Hidden bottom is the only way to change. It's worth it. It's a I've been turning on these bolts to apply some more pressure and as you can see the wood has moved forward and also as you can see there's more tension on these lines so it's working pretty well. I also have to clamp these metal things so that the wire will be caught up in between it. Now I'm gonna solder these pieces together. I have to add a little bit of wire in between it. Something like this. To protect the fishing wire from the heat of the soldering iron, I added a little plank. Alright, so we've soldered these little wires together now and we'll test it out and see if it works. Fingers crossed. Oh, it works! Yes. It's beautiful! Oh, I'm so happy that it works. I'm finishing up by adding the plexiglass inside of the wood. To finish it off, I will be cutting some small pieces of aluminum from this big sheet. To cut the aluminum, I'm just going over it with a box cutter a couple of times. So I'll make a groove in the aluminum. And now if you bend it a couple of times, it's gonna snap right off. Now we're going to cut it into smaller pieces. So one down, seven to go. So those are the seven other pieces. I'm gonna break them off. The last piece of aluminum. To hide the overlay of the two plexiglasses, I'm going to use one of those corner profiles. I just finished putting the corner profiles in and I glued them together with some hot glue gun. Also the plexiglass was glued on the inside here. And now I can finish it up by putting the cover on. Now I'll try to put the helmet on the table to see if it holds up and that way every time I come home I have a designated area where I can charge the helmet. And there you have it folks, our DIY tensegrity table is complete. 
a stunning piece of art that's both functional and mesmerizing. I hope you enjoyed this journey of building a Tensegrity table as much as I did. Remember, the possibilities with DIY projects are endless and with a bit of creativity you can turn any idea into reality. Now thanks for joining us today and I'll see you in the next one.